Morning. Mornos. Beans at the tin for breakfast. Hair on fleek. <clears throat> You're welcome. Camping here was great last night for me because I had the best sleep ever. It was hot, but because there's literally no one else here and we're in the middle of the bush, could have the uh, doors open a bit and yeah, it was great. Um, it's been spitting to rain quite uh, quite a lot of the time we've been here and there was a big storm just behind us yesterday. A lot of thunder and a lot of lightning. It like it just missed us. So obviously it's kind of, I think they get cyclones around here too. So we're a bit like, ooh, should we carry on? Not sure. Um, it's really cloudy and it's a bit windy and it's spitting again now. It's raining at the moment. So we're not sure. We're probably just gonna carry on anyway <clears throat> and uh, see what happens, but we don't have any radios. Like when you do this kind of bush camping and trips, you're supposed to have an in-car like radio where you can radio for help if you get stuck. And um, there's literally no phone signal around here. So yeah, it should be fun. This is the view from the lookout that kilometre up the road from our campsite last night. Okay, so this is Deep Reach, um, and the in local indigenous people believe that Barramirindi, or the Rainbow Serpent. Yeah, so the Rainbow Serpent apparently rests in this pool. Rainbow Serpent's really important in a lot of like um, indigenous mythology and stuff. Their beliefs and create like the creation time. The Rainbow Serpent plays a key part in that. So apparently, this is the story from around here about the Rainbow Serpent. You could just pause it if you want to read it. It's pretty interesting. Right, right. We've been driving for about three and a half hours, I reckon. Um, that road in wasn't great, <laughs> but we made it, it's fine, we let the tyres down so it wasn't too bad. Um, I think this is dirt all over my face, like dust dirt. And we've just stopped at the first uh, petrol station since we left uh, Karatha, well, Roburn, which is Oski Tourist Village. And if you want to see what a proper outback server looks like, this is it. Just trucks and dust. Righty eye, we have arrived, hair on fleek again, at uh, Dale's Gorge Campground in Karajini National Park. It is paid, it's $11 per adult, no power, just toilets. I'm getting flies everywhere. Um, but it's like an honesty thing again. I think they do check, but we've not had anyone check yet. So there's other people here, as if. It's like rammed, there's like 10 other people here, which is very unusual. And the road in from, um, like from that server was all tarmac, which is amazing because it looked like on the map that it was going to be a unsealed road again. Um, and there's some really good stuff around here. Obviously, there's actual Dale, Dale's Gorge or Dale Gorge, and there's circular pools and Fortescue Falls, which all look pretty good. Also, if you do take that road between Roburn and Port Hedland into Millstream National Park and Karajini National Park. There's asbestos in the air because <laughs> it's a mining town. There's like mining places on the way, um, so I don't know if they they're still using them. The only people we see, the only people we saw on that road in until we got to the Oski Servo survey uh, were workmen. So getting into Karajini is the, like the first kind of tourist slash travellers backpackers, whatever you want to call it, um, that we've seen. Look at these flies just landed on my face. Yeah, so apparently there's asbestos dust, asbestos dust in the air. Just uh, on the toilet, I noticed the snake warning sign. Apparently there's a, plenty of king browns around here. So this is what <clears throat> the campground looks like at dusk. And this is our little corner set up over here.
Can I just show you the amount of red dirt that is actually inside the car? Can you see that? That's not because we've been driving with the doors open. No, no, everything's been shut. It just gets everywhere. More nice. Um, so yeah, we've just come about two minutes up the road from Dales Gorge where we camped last night to Circular Pools. Um, so there's Circular Pool and Fortescue Falls. I think they're both a bit of a walk, but it's really hot. I'd really like to be in some water right about now. Okay, so this is Dales Gorge and that it's is Circular me. Pool. We need to try and get down there. Looks so nice. So this is the walk down to the pools. <laughs> Almost at the pool. It looks crocky, but apparently we're good. So this is Circular Pool. And it looks unreal. It looks good on the camera, but not as good as it looks in real life. It's like a little oasis. Circular Pool was amazing. I think that's one of my favourite spots that we've been to this whole trip. It was so nice. Um, and then you just drive a little bit. You can walk from Circular Pool down to Fortescue Falls, but it's two kilometres and a three hour return walk. It's better if you just come back up the cliff, drive down to the car park where we've just driven to, then do the walk down to the falls. That's what we're about to do now. I think it's only like 800 metres or something. But it's warmed up again, so I'm buzzing to get back in the water. But this Caragini definitely come. Oh, we've been to two spots pretty much, but it's been like one of my favourite places on this whole trip so far already. Oh, so this is what I was talking about the asbestos warning. Blue asbestos is a silicate mineral that occurs naturally within the Hammersley range. It may be exposed as a seam in rocks in deep sections of Dales Gorge as a blue colour. It's not hazardous in its unprocessed natural state. So we've seen quite a bit of asbestos, which is good. Um, so they're basically saying it's dangerous, but not in its pure form, which I think is true because I think it's only dangerous if you inhale the dust. So we should be right, just swimming in it and drinking it. What else? This is all still Dale's Gorge, all the way down here. And just down there, it's Fort Sea Falls. Look at it though. So we're here at Fortescue Falls. Who's keen to get in that water? Yeah, mate. I am. Gonna have to climb down these rocks to get there though. It's gonna be worth it. So happy right now. This is Fern Pool. Uh, can't be too loud or jump off the falls because it's a sacred place for the indigenous people. Where are you going? <laughs> Flying my mouth. Um, we are now at Knox Gorge. We're just going to do the lookout because there's Knox and Joffrey or I'm not sure how you pronounce it, I'm pronouncing it Joffrey. So we're just gonna, you can do a walk like all the way to the actual gorge, but it's like a three hour return. <laughs> We've done quite a bit today. So we're just gonna do the 300 meter return walk. So this is Knox Gorge. Just the view from the lookout, it's right by the car park. Definitely worth it. <laughs> another two minutes, another waterfall. Um, so just around the corner from Knox Gorge is, well, as I said, Joffrey Gorge. King Joffrey Gorge. I don't even think you can swim at this one, not sure, but we're only going to do the lookout as we've done quite a lot of walking and swimming and stuff today and it's pretty hot. Okay, this is Joffrey Gorge. So that there 
that white stuff is where in wet season it would be a waterfall because it's dry season just the gorge right all right so we've arrived at um eco retreat in Karajini. it's 20 dollars per person per night to camp and it's not powered they have like accommodation options but i think it's like 200 dollars there is a bar and a restaurant but we can't eat because it's booked out and they're short staffed um there's drinking water there's no wi-fi or anything like that and no signal but yeah it's pretty cool i'll just have a little scan around the park that's the reception and the bar and restaurant area 